This short video is about BIM fields, one of three models within the triaxial framework. BIM fields is one of the most important um, models within the overall BIM framework, uh, and um, we will be encountering it um, in many videos. So BIM fields, as a term, refers to all topics, activities, and actors across the BIM domain. So everyone, so whether we're discussing architects, engineers, um, owners, insurance companies, uh, software providers or software developers, uh, resellers, um, all of these, uh, all these industry stakeholders. So really covering all topics, activities, and actors. We're covering all stakeholders, their deliverables and requirements. So Binfields uh, represents um, all these stakeholders. And the way it's represented uh, is through a specific Venn diagram which includes types and components so first what are these types so we've got a technology field so we've got three field types we've got the technology field which overlaps with a process field with together they overlap with the policy field I'm going to explain this in a second and um, if you look at these fields and uh, overlapping uh, we notice we've got in this representation we've got three tabs we've got the players We've got deliverables and we've got requirements. So first, players, we've got policy players, technology players, and process players. They can be represented uh, on their own. So we can look, for example, on the interaction between a policy player, example, an insurance company or a policy maker, a government, and process player, example, an architect, an engineer, an owner, and technology player, uh, example, uh, software company like Autodesk or Nimicheck or um, Trimble. So we can look at BIM fields only uh, looking at the players and how they are interacting. We can look at the players' deliverables. So the deliverables of process um, fields, for example, are um, buildings, bridges, etc. While the policy deliverables it would be something like a mandate, an insurance policy, and technology deliverable from technology players would be something like um, software, like Revit or Archicad, etc. So these are deliverables. And we also have got uh, requirements. So each of these player types would have their own uh, requirements. So just for, as an example, the process field with all the engineers and architects and owners, all the, the, the players that generate uh, actual buildings, they have, they've got uh, BIM requirements like training, uh, change management, information uh, modeling, information management, etc. And we will be discussing these requirements also in separate video. So, so this is the first look at uh, the, the BIM fields and we will see all these uh, types, we've got these three types, and in each one of these types we've got three components, players, deliverables, and requirements. Another way uh, of understanding the fields is to understand their overlaps. So in this Venn diagram, the three circles are overlapping, generating these four areas. Um, so we've got the policy field here, the process field there, and technology fields. So we'll give you an example of what happens in the overlap between a policy field and a process field. So within this overlap, we are either overlapping the players or overlapping the deliverables or overlapping the requirements. Um, give an example um, of a mixed, uh, you know, a mixed example. For example, if we, if we say an architect sitting here is an architect who is uh, not generating architecture, providing a deliverable in policy, for how would that happen? If we look at the uh, Australian Institute of Architects or American Institute of Architect or you know, any kind of uh, association, of professionals working within the field, these typically are made of um, uh, process field players. So you've got architects uh, joined together in an association, but these people do not generate uh, buildings or, or any kind of typical deliverables of, that an architect would deliver. They will deliver uh, policies uh, for architects to follow. So the, inter the overlap between the policy and process field generate um, uh, associations which are uh, populated by players from one field generating deliverables in another. Give another example, let's say between the policy field and a technology field. Uh, let's say we've got uh, policy makers or universities joining forces with uh, software developers uh, to, uh, to have, let's say something like building smart. Okay, so building smart uh, fits neatly within an overlap between a policy player and a technology deliverable 
you know, just think of IFCs and the schemata they, gen, you know, used. Um, a final example would be, let's say, between process field and technology field would be a community of practice. Community of practice is a, is a group of um, of uh, policy players um, joining together in order to discuss or focus on a specific technology. They're not really focusing on architecture. They're not focusing on policy. Uh, they're mostly focusing on technology. A good example of this would be if a Revit user group would be an Archicad user group. It would be um, a drone, uh, you know, society where they all these enthusiasts about drones or about robots. They 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 join together and they don't really focus on policies or on their own work, but they focus mostly on how to use this technology efficiently. And we're going to cover these overlaps in, in the future in a separate um, video. Another way of looking at these fields and benefiting from them when analyzing the BIM domain is if we look not only at the field itself or their overlaps, but we look at the interactions. So uh, we look, for example, here on the left, you can see a, the policy field and the process field and the technology field. And the model here depicts a push and pull interaction between uh, these fields. So, so uh, one player within a process field, let's say, for example, engineering, would request that the university teach certain topics, that's called a pull request. Uh, also, let's say the university is generating um, all these uh, student engineer, you know, engineers or become you know, full engineers, and then they push them into the, the process field to be hired. Same thing with, with regards to the technology field. You've got uh, you know, so software requirements and software uh, you know, availability and hardware availability. Let's say uh, you know, a hardware company generates a new computer, uh, you know, a laptop, a very powerful laptop, which can be used in BIM. And um, uh, that deliverable is then pushed into the industry where the industry would use it or the opposite could happen. Uh, the industry is using all these uh, hardware and they feel that the computers are not uh, up to the task and they start demanding uh, you know, better, cheaper technology and you find that the technology field players, a software company or a hardware company or or network uh, uh, company uh, provided network providing company would start um, um, you know generating these solutions for the based on the pull from the process field uh, so these interactions are very important for us to to isolate deliverables and isolate requirements and see why they are happening and who are who is calling for them and who is providing them. Now, if you look at this model on the right, so the interaction is not only between the fields, but also between uh, a subset of that field. So we're looking at something called a subfield. So here, for example, within the process field, we've got subfield A, B, and C. If we put names to these subfields, for example, let's say this is the architect, this is the engineer, this is the, the, the owner or project manager or facility manager. So by using uh, this interaction view, we can understand or try to understand or try to isolate what what the, the architect wants from the engineer, what the owner wants from the architect, uh, what are they pushing, what are they pulling, what are the deliverables, what are the RFIs, uh, you know, what are the expressions of interest, etc. So we, we, we use these fields, their overlaps and their interactions in order to understand the relationship between the players or the stakeholders and we also to understand their deliverables, their unique deliverables and their unique uh, requirements and also we, we understand how uh, the relationship between these different stakeholders is taking shape, and it helps us to analyze this relationship using specific tools, which will be introduced in uh, videos in the future. Uh, so thank you for watching this video, and remember to subscribe to the BIM Framework channel, and see you in the next uh, video.